Okay, in this video I'm working on a copy of uh, the, uh, I'm going to call it a Madison bill biface. So you can see here that this uh, biface preform has been pretty well thinned uh, with the Cushing's neat ample method. It's really one of my uh, first runs uh, using the setup this particular interpretation, this particular uh, flaker and uh, roll chart. So it came out pretty thin. So basically, I'm going to use terminology here uh, that I'm not sure if others uh, would use, but uh, basically what we have going on here are uh, mostly surface flakes. So I'm going to call these flakes the surface flakes. I mean, you can see some running three quarters of the way across the stone. And, uh, and, and so also we will need to have some edge flakes. Uh, edge flakes would be trimming flakes on the edge. So I want to go into the secondary uh, uh, phase of reduction with this, uh, this biface. And maybe by the time it's done, we'll turn it into a maybe a corner tang piece, who knows. So in going into this, into the second uh, phase of uh, reduction, what I want to do is I want to isolate the high spots. First, I want to look at this and take uh, into account the, the overall contour. So on one side, it's a bit more concave, on the other side, it's a little bit more convex. And so I'm sure there's probably a more correct way to go about this between either side. Um, but uh, what I'm going to do is look for the high spots uh, and uh, go after the highest spots and then trim it up and then see about doing a little further reduction. So I can feel just feeling along here. I have a high spot here near the end. And I have a, a, a long ridge here. It's another high spot. I guess so I have two pretty good high spots here. And over here, I have a high spot here. A high spot here across the end. Um, I have a high spot here. So I think I have three area, kind of uh, higher than normal areas on the backside. So probably I'm going to go for the backside first. I don't know whether that's the correct thing to do or not, but that's what I'm going to do. We're actually, yeah, okay. Or, or I could go for the best platforms that already exist first. Um, either way, I'll just go for the the high spot. Okay, so I'm going to remove some edging flakes uh, right off the edge, and basically this is going to be to create my uh, isolated to create my platform. So. So I got some, got a nice edge flake in there. I don't have a hammer stone on me, but I would kind of rough up the, just use the edge of this. Let's see if that works. Okay, so now I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this in this piece of leather to help grip the piece. Um, I don't think leather has to be used, but this is experimental, so it's not gonna hurt either. Now I have a pretty good grip here. I'm gripping about half, about halfway up the edge of this body face, maybe a little more. I'm going to shoot towards the center with this. Okay, so here's my antler drift punch. It's cylindrical. The end is being ground flat, so I have a shoulder. That shoulder ideally should catch this edge. Okay, good. That's some tough stuff. We have a little flake off there. And, oh, I just, yeah, I, this flake came off like a th thin ribbon. And that's about it. I need to change the angle on this platform. I need, I need a little bit steeper angle. Okay, 
so those are some edge flakes removed. I'm going to take a little more off to so I don't have I don't want to leave a, uh, a sharp a sharp edge that that could collapse. So now put this back in the clamp. This clamp is probably comparable to the historical shoemaker's clamp uh, when shoemakers were, used to work between their knees. Okay, there we go. And I took, took this flake off and uh, that actually ran, that's about half the flake, so it ran to that. So here we cl cleared that ridge there's still a little bit of a high spot. It's okay. Uh, we can we can come in next to it and work on it. But that this thin flake actually cleared about half. Oh well, no, it cleared the ridge, um, it, but it ran an arc over the ridge, so it wasn't quite as flat as some of the previous uh, thinning flakes. So these smaller finishing flakes. We don't always run. Uh, well, I could probably come back this way and get some up there, but let me just work for now on the high spots. We've got another high spot along this ridge. Flakes with the idea of um, the uh, let's see, these edge flakes are to create the platforms. I don't have hammer stones, so I'll just use the edge there. I have a very thin, so that's a real thin area, and I gotta, I need to be careful to not over strike, because if I do, I can actually snap this uh, biface. And actually, the good thing about this biface is it's um, raw material, so it's not gonna be as brutal or easy to snap as a, uh, a heat treated piece. this off. So there we went, we took the ridge off and then it feathered out. There's a very slight arc on that piece, that flake. So that's flat now. There was a ridge there before. You can feel actually these high spots. So yeah, I, have, I have some high stuff here. But in, in this whitish uh, Inclusion stuff is actually much harder to flake than the This doesn't feel as bad, but it's generally harder to flake than a regular chart Are edge flakes, so I kind of squared up the edge. So I'm going to come off this way and remove this high spot. I'll probably work on one side and come down to create a bit of isolation effect because that, that high spot is pretty, pretty, uh, pretty stout in the center. Okay, so now. This may not be necessary. Let me try some more on it. Like that. Like that. 
angles. I'm going to line this up a little bit on one edge. Arr. So there, I just snapped my my face. So, what did I do wrong? I think, let's look at this. I think what I did wrong is I left too much extending, which allowed for bending. And I think if I had dropped it in better, that wouldn't have happened. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. That would explain it. Give another shot here. So, this is actually maybe the, the first run of dovetailing the drift tech with the, the previous uh, Clovis knee and whole uh, preform thinning tech. So, um, something to learn here uh, is, uh, at least for me anyway, is to not leave so much extending that the blow results in a lot of bending. I should have isolated this better with the clamp. So it's all about learning. Hopefully we'll do better next time around. And uh, if you want to see what these Clovis knee anvil preforms look like, well, now you can see a profile. There you go. So here's a, there's a profile. And yeah, so there you can see the, the, the width, or you could take a guess at uh, what some mappers get into is so the width to uh, thinness or thickness ratio. And uh, this is not a good example of the uh, fishing uh, the anvil preform technology, but it is <coughs> somewhat of an example. So, all right, so we learned something today, though we broke something, and that's oftentimes how it goes.